All right, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us for yet another Ask Me Anything session with uh, members of the Messenger team. Mm -hmm. My name is Alex Muramoto and I am the developer advocate for the Messenger platform. And today we're going to ask a whole bunch of interesting questions to Helen Sang, who is the engineering manager both for Messenger platform and wit.ai. Uh, Helen, thanks for joining us today to field all these questions from our amazing dev circle or developer circle members. Thank uh, Thanks for having me here. Yeah, ab absolutely. So you've been with uh, Messenger for, or you've been with Facebook for almost 10 years, yeah, right? Yeah, close to 10 years now. Wow, and, and Messenger for how long? Messenger for one and a half year. One and a half year? Two. Yeah. Cool, so I mean, you must have a lot of, we assume you have a lot of interesting insights on all kinds of things that developers might be interested about. So we're just gonna dive straight in uh, to some of the questions that have come in from our developer circles around the world. Uh, the first one is from Cape Town, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And this is specifically about uh, building building on the Messenger platform. Uh, the, the member of the developer circle has wanted to know, uh, how do you determine and what do you think are some of the best tools for, especially for building bots uh, on the platform? Well, wow, there's so many great tools out there. Well, one of the great thing and really awesome thing about Messenger platform is it's so flexible. So you can, mm. one great choice is actually building it on top of the platform by, by itself. And so sure. you get a really customized experience. If you want to actually create, uh, use some tools uh, to create some experience, um, you know, very easily. Um, we also have a platform uh, a provider uh, directory in our website that actually gives okay. you a lot of recommendations around what kind of things to use. Um, let me give you some examples. Um, so for example, Chat fuel is a really good way to get something and stop and start sure, from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, they are very uh, up to date around the messenger new features. Um, and if you want to build something like a FAQ bots to do mm -hmm. like question and answering, it's actually very easy to do something like that. From we scratch. work very closely with a lot of those platform providers yeah, right? to make do. sure that they're really up to date on yes. the new features. For yes, the and and that's really the beauty about the platform is that there's actually now a lot of platform providers building on top of platforms mm -hmm. that way. Cool. Um, other examples, for example, they're like. Uh, Converse.ai actually is a great way to actually build uh, e-commerce bots. Mm -hmm. um, they build actually like a whole UI flow that allows you to go and figure out what is the e-commerce flow that you want, and they integrate with our payment feature as well. So um, there's also tools out there that actually helps you to go and build survey bots and so forth. So mm -hmm. just tons of things out there. I would suggest people just go and like look at the directory explore a little bit more around what, what they uh, what is the offering out there and see what kind of things that they were trying to build cool and what about like uh, for programming languages do you have a, do you have a preferred language to build bots in um, I would say that well since the uh, platform actually uses API and web hosts you can literally mm -hmm. use any language that you're yeah, really absolutely. comfortable with um, so I always say stick with the ones that you're really familiar with mm -hmm. um, uh, the common ones that I've seen uh, so far is like node.js yeah, PHP and Python myself. yeah <laughs> um, so I, I think it's it's really because like those are most common languages that people easily can pick up mm -hmm. on uh, but you are welcome to actually use language that you want yeah I mean pretty much any any server side language, right? Yeah. Well, it will work just fine exactly. as long as it can expose an HTTP endpoint. Exactly. Cool. The next question uh, is around payments. Mm -hmm. And you were just touching on payments a little bit when you were talking about uh, some of the service providers that are in our directory. Mm -hmm. But for developers that want to you know, build directly on top of the Messenger platform uh, that want to integrate payments either for offering services or products or, or what, what have you, uh, can you talk a little bit about the options that are available through the platform for integrating payments? Yeah, so we ship the web SDKs for payments. We we can actually you know integrate the whole play, uh, payment flow in mm -hmm. the web view. Um, it's only available in US right now, and we know that a lot of people are actually asking about like how to actually expand that to Europe, Asia, and sure. so forth. Yeah, I've had, so, I've heard a lot about yeah. that personally. <laughs> so we're working really hard on it, looking into that right now. Um, that said, there's basically a lot of good uh, one really great work around is using the web view. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love the web view because it's versatility. You can basically build any kind of widgets and components. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, web full view web view, right? yeah, so it's a full web view, right? So pretty much any any uh, web technologies that you already love, exactly. you can completely build with them inside of that. Right, so what I've seen is uh, people actually using their own checkout flow inside mm -hmm. the web view itself. Right. Um, you can do like pay, PayPal integration, anything that you want to do in the, you know, the checkout flow, normally that you do a web 
website, you can actually do it in the web view. Mm. Um, so things I've seen actually working really well is like, here's the items that you want to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, there might be actually a click to action button that you want to say pay now, for example. Mm -hmm. When you click on it, it opens up the web view and get you to like the normal checkout flow. Right. on that. Um, so in order to actually do something like that, though, you do need to ask for approval. So mm -hmm. go into like basically get the approval on actually getting payment off of Messenger. And once you get approval for that, then you can use the web you do gotcha. create this. And, and, for, and for those developers that are in the US and that want to, to integrate uh, our, our payments SDK uh, through Messenger platform, that's the Messenger extensions SDK, right? Yes, that's, that's correct. That okay, yes. cool. The next, the next question comes from Cameroon, mm -hmm. uh, and it's about something that, you know, this comes up all the time, you know, regardless of what kind of developer tooling or like platforms you're talking about, especially when you're talking about things on mobile and the web, and it's, that's, uh, you know, cross-platform yep. compatibility. And so uh, the question that, that came up from Cameroon is that, you know, uh, as many developers know, currently the the platform doesn't support uh, any kind of OS detection. That's right. Uh, so what are the options that are available uh, when you're developing on the platform to either detect, you know, what mobile platform you're on or whether you're on, whether the person messaging them is coming in through the web, uh, and also whether or not they're using uh, a different version of Messenger, something, something like Messenger Lite. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, first of all, debuggability is really important for developers. Yeah. We all know that yeah, while well, sure. we're building on something on the platform. So I want to say that we're really investigating in terms of what kind of things that would actually help developer to build on our platform. And mm -hmm. this is a really ongoing process. So mm -hmm. like, look forward, stay tuned for more things that will actually come out. Cool. Um, in the meanwhile, if you're trying to figure out like, hey, uh, in the web view, what kind of features, what kind of things can I actually do on it? Uh, because that depends on what the, the pe messenger like pe people yeah. are actually using uh, the devices and so forth. Right. Um, the there is a function called get supported features that actually give you and that's also the messenger extensions SDK. Yes, that, that is also the, okay. the extension SDK that gives you like um, you know basically a list of what is actually uh, ca the capabilities that you mm -hmm. can use in this web before this particular person who is using the messenger device. Um, and so things like payments, whether you can actually share back to the threads, mm -hmm. like these type of functionalities, you can actually create using that SDK to give you that information around like what can I really offer for. For, for people in, in that case. Cool. So the next question that uh, came up from our developer circles that, and this is one that actually I've, I've heard a lot, uh, and that is around how does a developer know either when the, when the conversation has been deleted or when they've been blocked by somebody who they had previously been interacting with on, on Messenger? Because there isn't, there isn't like a webhook event or any yeah. kind of notification that actually goes to the bot or the, or the bot developer when that happens, right? So what's mm -hmm. the best way to, to deal with that? How do you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so developers actually have asked me that question before, mm -hmm. um, and the reason because is that they really want to figure out an efficient way of sending messages to people, and right. they don't want to send messages to people who have already blocked them, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just to actually um, talk about the deletion of conversation, right? Um, we've actually changed the behavior so that when deleting the conversation, we no longer really block uh, the thread anymore, right. and that happens since uh, end of June. Okay. Um, and so rationale behind that is because we actually found, based on developer feedback, mm -hmm. we've looked into, hey, why are people actually deleting their thread? Mm -hmm. And it turns out that a lot of people delete, delete their thread because they want a clean inbox, not because right. they want to actually block them. Right, yeah, the inbox user. zero thing is not just for email. Right, guess, right? Yeah. Um, and so we've actually changed that. Um, to answer the question around why we don't have the, the web hook for uh, blocking mm -hmm. uh, the thread though, this is all because of uh, you know user privacy. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided not to actually go and send, send a signal back to the the, the business around why a user actually have blocked, when the user have blocked the business, is because, well, the user have actually signaled that they don't want to give access to the business around like what they're doing anymore. And so, uh, so it's, it's really like a, for us to protect the user privacy that we mm -hmm. decide not to actually send out uh, web pull events. Uh, that said, for efficiency purpose, we're still trying to figure out like, um, so we're working on how to actually make this more efficiently, it's particularly around the broadcast, uh, you know, use cases when you're mm -hmm. saying like, hey, I want to actually send it to like, thousands of people. 
it, in right. that case, when, you really like don't want to. We have a newsletter to. or something. Exactly. Of that sort, right? uh, so we're looking into how to actually do this efficiently for for developers as well. Okay, cool. So we can stay tuned to hear That's more right. about that hopefully in, yeah. the, in the future, right? Cool. Uh, all right. Last question uh, is from Oldenburg, Germany. And uh, this this one I think you should be able to answer pretty easily. Okay. The new the new page inbox UI. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of people re really like it. It's it up until now it's been very essential for using uh, the the handover protocol feature of Messenger platform in order to enable kind of live chat uh, where you can ha where you can hand off uh, the control of the conversation from your for example your automated bot to the page inbox mm -hmm. where somebody can manually uh, respond. So what, but not everybody has gotten the new inbox UI yet. Yes. So what, what's going on with that and what's the uh, timeline for getting that out to everybody? Uh, so the short answer is uh, we're aiming to actually migrate all the old inbox to a new inbox by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm also really excited about the handover protocol integrations because um, lots of people are really excited about how we can fundamentally you just give a default live chat functionality without doing right. a whole lot of work. Um, so, so while we're actually doing the migration, we're also looking into uh, how can we actually use a hand like support the handover protocol integration with uh, page inbox or with the old inbox as mm -hmm. well. So stay, stay tuned. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for joining us for this Ask Me Anything session with, with Helen. Helen, once again, thank you so much for, for taking the time. Uh, for all of you out there, uh, do remember that you can continue to interact with, with both uh, engineers from the Messenger platform team as well as myself yes. on our Messenger platform developer community group on Facebook. And uh, looking forward to talking to all of you a lot more in the future.